in the Torah world, in the Torah the world, it doesn't matter how smart a person is. The Gemara in Masechet Moed Katan says, if he has bad character traits, it's forbidden, forbidden to learn from him. If he has heretical mindset, if he says heretical things, you're not allowed to learn from him. It's like eating pig. And unfortunately, Rabotai Karim, many times, people arrive at the wrong conclusion because the source of their information is horrendous. Now, I've mentioned this person in the past, but it seems like it needs to be uh, mentioned again because perhaps people didn't hear enough and they still do it. Or oh, maybe I didn't say enough and people are not listening. Or simply no one cares. I'm not sure. Who do you think is the most famous American Jewish speaker is? Let's call it religious, but it's furthest from the truth. What do you guys think is the most famous religious? Madis Friedman? Madis Friedman? No. No. Huh? Jonathan Sachs? No. Shapiro. Shapiro. What's his name again? First name? Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro is a smart, clever young man. He's probably around my age, maybe a little give or take. Speaks extremely fast, like a New Yorker. Sharp. Knows a little bit about a lot of different things and can hold a conversation with the best of them. Needless to say, debate. And he wears a little kippah. So he presents Judaism for many people. It shouldn't surprise you that a few idiots have asked me if he could be Mashiach. Because he wears a kippah and once in a while he mentions God. When it suits him, people think, oh, maybe he's going to be Mashiach. Now, now, in order to be Mashiach, at the first least, you have to be a righteous Jew. Like, you can't be a Rasha, heretic, and be Mashiach at the same time. That cannot be. Which means that at the very least, a person needs to meet the requirement of being a righteous Jew, meaning he has to believe what the Torah says, he has to follow what it says, right? Meaning you have to believe and accept the 13 principles of faith and follow what it says, right? All the, the whole Torah. Now because he speaks fast, because he speaks well, and even correctly on many topics politically, ignorant people and even sometimes people that are not as ignorant but simply f easily fooled and naive assume that what he says in, when it comes to Torah also is correct. Like his opinion, for example, about the political situation as far as whether it be racism, whether really there is racism as much people say as there is or not, or his opinion about abortion, the many of the things that he says are correct when it comes to that. When he talks about the liberal lefty-minded types of people and how much damage they cause to society, many of the things that he says are correct. There's no problem with it. But I wish, I wish he would just shut his mouth and stick to those topics and don't even say a single word about Torah because every single word that comes out of his mouth when he talks Torah is heretical. So much so, I have to mention it again today. Because his videos are extremely popular. His show is extremely popular. He gets to literally millions of followers, millions of listeners. And many ignorant people, Jews and non-Jews alike, actually think that what he says is correct. And no one is speaking against it from the Jewish world. A few Christians are speaking against it, but you know everything they believe is also wrong. So who's listening to them? 
So the problem is that he says things that are completely idiotic and when it comes to the truth. But worse yet, they're against the 13 principles of faith. For example, he does not believe in things that he can't prove scientifically. That in itself is heretical. That in itself is heretical. That's a philosophical minded person. That's how the, the philosophers in Greece and Rome, that's what they, they had a belief. They, the way they tried to destroy Judaism and, and Torah world, say, look, we can't see God, therefore it doesn't exist. It's like, see, there's a closet. Okay, so you know the closet exists. You see that there is a building? Okay, so you know the building exists. You see that there's a chair? Okay, so you know that the chair exists. Do you see God? Oh, you don't see God? Okay, so therefore God doesn't exist. Until a clever young Jewish guy came in, a little ju Jewish kid says, Oh, you see the chair? Yes, yeah, so you know the chair exists. You see the uh, uh, books? Okay, so the books exist. You see the uh, people? So the people exist. You see the teacher's brain? No. Okay, so it doesn't exist. <laughs> so, he has the mentality that if he doesn't see things, therefore he doesn't know whether they exist or not, and he gives the impression that it may or may not. In Judaism, we don't have such luxury to say maybe yes, maybe not, and whatever we feel like it. So for example, when he was asked by some atheist that he had a uh, sit-down with, which by the way, according to the Gemara, and the Shulchan Aruch, you're not allowed to have conversations with such people. The Gemara in Masechet Abu Dazara says, the Rabbi Eliezer ben Holkenos, benefited by simply enjoying one word, like a joke, that a Christian said, and a Kadosh Baruch Hu almost killed him for it. Not allowed to have these debates with Christians just for the sake of a show, or have these discussions, these, these uh, sit-down coffee uh, uh, discussions uh, with people. Oh, let me talk to the atheist and have a, you know, a nice conversation. Not allowed to have such things. Why? Because Jewish people follow you, they could potentially follow him as a result too. This atheist, this heretic, because of you. Yeah, but that's my show. Okay, well, you should change your show then. What can I tell you? And he has these debates with Christian missionaries and alikes and atheists and all types of people that we as a Jew, Jews are not allowed to listen to. Hence the reason why all of a sudden in the last few years, many modern Orthodox Jews began to have an interest in Christianity. This is one of the sources. Because he's very popular and he speaks to Christians on a regular basis, especially the Christian missionary types. He speaks to them and debates with them. Many modern Orthodox people get to see a little bit of Yoshke in their life. A little bit of Mary, a little bit of uh, Yoshke, maybe some Yossi. Do, 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 do. But you have to keep on. Keep on. Yeah, keep on. Keep on. You're still a Jew. That's what happens. That's what happens in this philosophical type of minded. You allow yourself to roam in the lion's den. Now he allows himself to roam in the lion's den because he did good in the political world as far as speaking against and, and tearing down a few people. So he figures that he could take on religion also. And unfortunately he's destroying any one of his listeners that has any, any inclination to Judaism at all. Why? Because everything he says is wrong. It's simply wrong. He says that he uh, doesn't believe that there is a soul or an afterlife because he's not really sure. Or maybe there is, but I'm not really sure. But probably not. That's what he says. So in essence, you die, probably nothing going on. You just turn to a tree. Just turn to a tree. Why is he so? The guy asks him, so why do you keep the mitzvot? Why do, you, why do you keep the Torah? Because, oh, I keep the Torah because I think that by following the religion, it's just simply going to give you a better quality of life and a better society. Not because God said so. Because it's better to have rules. The Rambam writes, a goy, needless to say a Jew, a goy that keeps the seven Noahide laws just because they make sense to him, because he thinks it's going to give him a better life, and not because God said so, not only is called a fool, 
in heaven, but on top of it does not get rewarded for them. Does not go to heaven. Goes to Gainal. Why? You only go to heaven if you listen to the Torah because God said so. Not because it makes sense to you not to murder. Not because it makes sense to you not to steal. But the little keeper guy from, uh, from, uh, from uh, the, uh, the blog, Ben Shapiro, no, no, he does it because he thinks it's better for society, it's better for, for humanity to keep it. Where we were. Well, do, do, you, do you believe there's a soul or something like a soul, a pattern of information that represents who you are that floats off the body and goes, continues on? After so, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, honestly, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think anybody has a great verifiable account of, right, of, of right, that. I, right. I have suspicions, but again, there's suspicions right, less, right. less about knowledge. What I do know, and the reason why I'm religious, is that a religious lifestyle that, that is based on certain fundamental premises, I think, makes life better for people. I think that the, the rules that are set down, yeah. uh, as currently understood at least, uh, are rules that, that are likely to lead you to leading a happier and better life than, than your pure reason alone. Because pure reason alone unleashed uh, without even those moorings in Judeo-Christianity can lead to a lot of really terrible places. Furthermore, doesn't really believe in reincarnation. Doesn't believe in reincarnation. Doesn't make sense to him. Resurrection of the dead doesn't really agree with what the sages said because he thinks that the whole issue of reincarnation and, 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 and just uh, the whole mystical aspect of the Torah is just something that came up recently as a defense against Christianity. That's how little he knows. He thinks that the whole mystical part of the Torah it's something that came up re in recent generations as a defense against the Christian idol worship. That's, this is how stupid he is when it comes to Torah. I wish he was half as smart about Torah as he is about all the other nonsense that he talks about and the serious things that he talks about. But the problem is that the ego has grown so much, he simply assumes knowledge. Assumes knowledge. So I was curious, by the way, that the, you know the ancient Jews, said, the, you know, the Shoal, and you don't go anywhere after your your death, right? Yeah, the the idea of the afterlife is uh, is a pretty modern invention in Judaism. Yeah. It really it really yeah. only crops up historically speaking a little bit in the prophets, and it's usually the late prophets. Right. And it's and it's really maybe as a response to early Christianity or or right. Greek thought. So yeah, in the in the Bible itself, there's no reference in the Torah. There's no right. reference to the afterlife. So what, what, what at do you all. think happens after the death of your body? So I mean. I only have suspicions because, again, uh, unverifiable. My suspicion is that if there, if there is a God, which I believe, uh, who exists outside of time and space, and that what animates me is that I'm made in the image of God, and that what animates my capacity is that I'm made in the image of God, that I reunify with God. That basically, there is a the, the traditional Jewish take on this has been that there's a cleansing process. Judaism doesn't believe in eternal hell, so it's instead this idea that there's a cleansing process for your for your soul, the part that you got from God, that spark of life that you got from God. You've schmutzed it, schmutzed it up while you're alive, <laughs> and now there's a cleansing process, and then and that's what hell is, sort of. Uh, and then you are reunited with God, and you have greater understanding. Uh, the idea of me being a distinct personage outside of my body, I think, is is a difficult one. Uh, that's that's my own personal. belief So you don't think you're that. physically resurrected uh, into heaven with God? No, yeah, I just, think I think that it, something like a soul or energy or consciousness or something. Like yes, that. Yeah. yes, uh, a form like an Aquinas right. form, right? right. Uh, but yes, right. I, I think that. Th those are actually two different things in Judaism as well. Like the, the idea of tichiyat hametim, which is the idea of resurrection of the dead, uh, that's a different idea than what happens after you die, right? right. Tichiyat hametim is the idea that eventually the Messiah comes, that we'll all be resurrected back in our physical bodies at a certain point, which, you know, honestly, given the nature of how science is moving and, and the possibilities of cloning is, is actually less crazy than it, than it sounded probably a couple of thousand years ago. Yeah, I debunk most of the modern, you know, the singularities coming, we're going to upload everybody into the cloud, <laughs> and this is not going to happen. No, definitely. I mean, not. that's good. To, that's good to know because I just feel like the computer would be really weird. It's, it's weird <laughs> to live inside a computer, but. Or, or, or that we're living in the in, in a computer now, but there's no buffering or you know little pixels that are going off. One of the worst things that just uh, I think is just completely ridiculous, but unfortunately, I believe many people will believe him in this. Is when the guy asked him about Mashiach, he says, "You wait for Mashiach." He says, "Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not Mashiach like people think." Like it's going to be some mystical figure. No, I'm waiting for a strong politician to come and bring order to the world.
Christ. You're not waiting for the Messiah to come. Right. He's not coming in the in So the I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the Messiah to come in the form of a political figure, right? So the, so the, the Messiah in, in Judaism is a guy who's going to come back and is going to establish peace in Israel and is going to assure that, that you know, there's, a, there's sort of a happier world with a bunch of political aspects to it, as, as explained by Maimonides. But he's going to die too, right? He's not going to come back and everybody lives forever and, and any so of that kind of stuff. he's a corporeal agent. He's just like us. Right. But, like, but, and the, 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 in the Jewish view, any person could be the Messiah. Any Jew can be the Messiah in the Jewish view. Right. right? So I could be it. Who knows? But, it's not, <laughs> but I'm not. But well, it's, you're it, off to a good start. But right. He thinks the Mashiach is going to be a politician. If the Mashiach is a politician, we should all commit suicide. The qualifications for a politician is to be a liar. A liar and a liar. You don't have to do anything else other than be a liar. The people running for the highest office are typically the biggest liars. Somebody showed me a video that apparently just hit the tape again of this imbecile uh, Joe Biden, who's running for president now, one of the dumbest people in the universe, is fooling the rest of the universe at the same time, which shows how stupid the rest of society is. He was caught lying on TV 20, 30 years ago about everything. He says he has three degrees from college, barely has one. Said that he was a top, top of his class in college. Out of 82 students, he was 75th, meaning he was retarded. He wasn't even fifth, top 50 percentile. The degrees he says he has, he doesn't have. The accomplishes, his accomplishments he says he has, he doesn't have. He doesn't even know how to speak. Needless to say, to speak for himself. They have pictures of him during a debate with, with Donald Trump where he's getting fed lines. It's a microphone in his hand, a microphone in his ear. Someone is telling him what to say. He doesn't know how to speak in a debate. The whole point is to know what you have on your mind. He has people telling him what to say. He, when he gives a speech, he reads from a, from, a, from a thing. Somebody's telling him what to say to a news network about himself. He doesn't know what to say. When he was told, read off these numbers, this report of coronavirus, of how many deaths there happened, and so on. He doesn't know numbers. He says 1,000 and 100 and 5,000 and 6,000 and 5,000 and 6,000. All is one number. All of this is, he doesn't know anything. And guess what? He could potentially be the next president of the United States. One of the dumbest people that ever worked the sur surface of the earth is, could potentially be in a position of power, which really means the people behind them become president. We just don't know who they are. So you don't really have to be smart to be dangerous. But when you're smart, it actually makes you more dangerous. Needless to say, Ben Shapiro, in my opinion, more dangerous than Biden to the Jewish world. Why? Because many Jews, especially young ones, listen to him and hold what he says as this is Judaism. Why? He has a keep on. He's modern Orthodox. He says he's, you know, modern Orthodox. He doesn't deny it. He says he's proud to be a Jew. But once in a while, he'll say something heretical that... Either you don't know that it's heretical, or if it is, you're just like, oh, he probably has a source because he's so smart, and he says it so quickly, he probably knows what he's talking about. So when he says that he thinks the Mashiach is going to be a politician, people are like, oh, you know what, that makes sense. Maybe, maybe, you know what? Maybe I thought, ah, you know what? Ah, maybe Trump is going to be Mashiach. Yeah, but he has to be a Jew too. Nah, you know, no, no. Ben Shapiro will figure that out. Maybe Ben Shapiro is going to run for office, and he's Mashiach, really. And people have all these ludicrous beliefs when a person doesn't know the very basics of Judaism. Doesn't know anything. Doesn't know anything, any basics about Judaism. Violates the 13 principles of faith openly and in public. Says that says, the things that you prayed for, all of you prayed for on, on Yom Kippur, you had a vidue gadol. And the vidue gadol, you said, I'm sorry for a lot of things. But you know also what you said, I'm sorry for? You said, I'm sorry for all the things you did during this life and the previous life. Meaning what? Reincarnation and a soul is not a mystical belief that only some people follow 
It's the foundation of Judaism. It's the fundamentals of Judaism. It's not that something that just came up and you could choose. It's in your machzor. You said, I'm sorry for your previous life. Meaning, you testified that you, you have lived before this life. So, when someone says things like that so carelessly, and just has conversations with heretics like they're friends, guess what? Not only does it show that they're damaged, they've become a heretic, they are a heretic, but all of the fans, all of the listeners, all of the people that are listening to him, especially after today, after listening to today, for sure are either heretics or on their way to being heretics. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, but he's really popular. Maybe he could do this, maybe he could do that. I'll buy he does tshuva. But Rabotai, popularity doesn't mean good. Big noise doesn't mean good. The Sefer Melachim, Aleph, Kings 1, has an extraordinary story in it that gives us a little bit of an idea of what to expect as far as how Mashiach is going to show up. Because most of us, we think that Mashiach is going to come in some type of flashy way all of a sudden some politician takes off the mask and says I am Mashiach or some guy on YouTube says I am Mashiach and makes some type of scene it doesn't work that way it won't work that way I promise you it won't work that way Eliyahu Navi did everything and anything possible that he could to defend the honor of Hashem. In chapter 19 of the book of Kings 1, Eliyahu Navi is fleeing Achav and Izevil after they killed righteous prophets and he rebuked them they tried to kill him and he fleed them. He eventually gets to the desert, can't find any food, and he passes out. After crying to Hashem that he tried his best, it's not working, there's no food, there's no nothing. I guess Hashem wants to kill me, that's it, I don't deserve to live. Suddenly, an angel of Hashem comes to Eliyahu Navi, wakes him up, and tells him, eat this. And miraculously, there was a little bit of food and water next to Eliyahu Navi in the middle of the desert. Eliyahu, so tired and consumed and literally on the verge of dying, he was barely able to get up and eat the food. He got, he drank, he ate, and he passed out. Shortly later, that same angel wakes him up again, says, eat this, more food. You're going to need it because the journey is long. He eats the food and gets superhuman powers to allow him to walk through the desert for 40 days and 40 nights without eating and drinking or stopping or sleeping. This is in the Tanakh. Supernatural, but it's literal. After 40 days and 40 nights of walking through the desert, he arrives at Mount Choliv, Mount Sinai. Gets to the mountain. This is where Hashem wants him to be. But he doesn't know why, because Hashem hasn't spoken to him in a long time. Last he heard of him was 40 days ago from the angel. Suddenly, here's a message. Why are you here, Elijah? What are you doing here? What are you 
We do it on Mount Sinai. In essence, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is asking them, what's your best merit that allows you to be here? Why? If I was Eliyahu, I'd say, listen, I prayed every day in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, I learned to lie, I did mitzvot, and by the way, I did some rebuking, I did some this and some that. I mentioned everything, the whole cheshbon, I've been everything I ever did since the time I was born. Everything I remember, I'm going to mention. Eliyahu Navi mentions one thing. It says, one mitzvah I did, that's everything. Vayomer, kano kineti la Adonai lo aitzevot. Ki azvu britecha bnei Yisrael, et mizbechotecha arasu, vet neviecha argu, bacherev. He says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I have acted with great zealousness for Hashem, God of legions, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have raised your altars and have killed your prophets by the sword. And he says to him, and now I alone have remained, and they now seek to take my life. In essence, Eliyahu Navi tells Akadosh Baruch Hu, Why am I here? I was the only guy that was zealous for you. I was the only guy that rebuked Am Yisrael because they went against the Torah. They said heretical things. They worshipped idols. They, they, they did all types of things. I fought for your name. That's it. Forget about my prayers. Forget about my tzedaka. Forget about my learning. Forget everything else. This is what, why am I here? You're asking me, I'm here because I fought for you. Many stupid people say, oh, why does Hashem need you to fight for him? No, he doesn't need you to fight for him. He wants you to fight for him. Eliyahu Nabi could have answered any other answer. He was a righteous person. He was a tzaddik. Tell me, Chacham, Kodesh, Kodesh, Shem. But Eliyahu says, I was zealous. I fought for your name. When? And everybody else was going against you. And now, because I went against them and for you, they all want to kill me. Not just write stupid comments about me on the internet. Not just not donate. Not just steal money. Not just uh, ban you. No, they want to kill me, Hashem. So Kadosh Baruch Hu responds to him in kind. He says to the Eliyahu, go out of the cave and stand on the mountain. Stand on top of the mountain. Hashem is saying, I'm going to show you myself. He says, and behold, Hashem was passing and great powerful wind smashing mountains and breaking rocks went before Hashem. But then a message came out. Hashem is not in the wind. It was a big wind. Wow, Hashem is in the wind. He's probably somewhere in this tornado. Passes, 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 and the message comes out. Hashem is not the wind. He's not inside the wind either. Then after that, a huge noise. An earthquake. See the whole mountain is shaking. The ground is shaking. And the message comes out. Hashem is not in the earthquake. Hashem is not in the earthquake. Lo baruach Hashem. And after the earthquake comes a fire. And again, it says Hashem is not in the fire. And after all of this theatrics, this extraordinary miracle after miracle, this, I can't even imagine what Eliyahu Navi was looking at. Suddenly, nothing. 
no noise at all no sound at all and that's when Hashem shows up the Gemara in Masechet Brachot page 48a says from here we learn that when the king arrives everything is quiet meaning that all of these theatrics and craziness that happens that's before the king comes once the king shows up everybody's quiet if they're still noisy he's not the king he's not the king in the world today people are scared of celebrity status whether they're losing it or going against it people are scared to go against the norm even though the norm is abnormal why there's a lot of noise everywhere but don't think that just because something is popular that's what Hashem wants there's two billion plus people that are Muslims that want to kill Jews there's two and a half billion Christian idol worshippers that are killing Jews spiritually on a regular basis and at times also physically too there are billions of people that are 100% idol worshippers from all countries and so on you can't get any proofs as a you know of, of validation of any kind as a result of large numbers it doesn't mean anything but you see Rabotai what you can get is a hundred percent certainty a hundred percent certainty from just a few Jews because why they rely on an opinion it's the only opinion that counts it's God's opinion and God tells us his opinion sometimes directly sometimes indirectly through his sages if any of us goes against especially openly nonchalantly carelessly and arrogantly against the opinions of our sages that were accepted as Allah accepted as this is the foundation of Judaism guess what you officially become a void you officially become something we ignore you officially become something we don't listen to why because what you're saying is antithetical to our belief system whether you wear a keeper or not is irrelevant whether you have a beard or not is irrelevant there are many people that have keepers and beards that are horrible people and many that are good people there are many people that don't necessarily wear a keeper that are decent people now you already know my opinion about man is freedom and Asha every day he comes out with more videos that are worse than the ones from before and he continues to get more and more popular by the day just today or yesterday he got highlighted by some news outlet by having a video saying don't fear like you shouldn't fear anything as if there's nothing to be scared of including God and he continues to get more and more popular and they continue to invite him in different synagogues that he's never been in in a Sephardic community, in Ashkenazi community, Hasidic community, he's invited everywhere. People simply are following the footsteps of the heretic. But guess what? He is a microcosm in comparison to a Ben Shapiro that has many more followers, both Jews and non-Jews. Meaning that he is not only hurting his fellow Jews with his heretical beliefs, but on top of it, he's giving the non-Jewish world ammunition ammunition to go against our belief system because he's showing something that's the opposite of true so it's very important for us to know that if you're going to continue listening to people that are heretics you become a partner in a crime and with that being said Rabotai you have to make sure that you take these things seriously not make any type of fighting wars on the internet I hate you you hate me not to make machloket between you and other Jews 
not to make a whole, uh, you know, who can insult each other better. But rather, you have to be careful with which friends you choose and where you spend your time. If your rabbi, your speaker, is a follower of, of, of atheists, is a f- friend of, of idol worshippers and so on, guess what? You're going to become one too. And this is the reason why Shapiro is moving to Boca Raton, by the way. There's a rabbi that's a perfect fit over there. You know, he really is. He's moving to Boca Raton. That community. Why? Because that's his foundation, and that's where it is, there is further teaching there. I wish he did Shuvah, because I think he'd do a lot, of good, a lot of good. I just don't think it's, it's likely. Why? He would have to stop what he's doing and actually start learning Torah. But that's not good for business. His business. And the only reason why I go public with stuff like this is because I know this is really the only way to get the message out there. To do private teachings. Oh, listen, Ben, you should change. It's not going to work. Why? Because those messages, those videos of his heretical teachings are out there in the millions. He would have to literally remove every single video he's made talking about religion and on top of it, file copyright infringement. On any single person that ever has his video on there, which is not happening, because then they would file against him and so on. Meaning, the damage is too big to fix. Hopefully, he can do tshuva at least to contain his own life, but I don't know how he can fix the rest of it. My concern is not really him. My concern is his followers, his listeners, that think that he's right. Because he's right on some other things, he's right on this. To say that, you know, you don't necessarily believe in an afterlife 100% because there's no real proof to it or the issues with souls or that the, or the Mashiach has to be a politician or other different things that I've heard him say uh, in different short clips that people have sent me that are literally antithetical to Judaism altogether or simply just by itself him saying that he only keeps the Torah because he thinks it makes sense for society and not necessarily because God said so or best yet, my favorite, he says that uh, Judaism does not believe in eternal punishment. Even though the Ramban writes in Shah Gmul that uh, eternal punishment is very much a fundamental belief of Judaism. The Gemara Maseret Rosh Hashanah, page 17a and 16b, both say that eternal gainom is very much standard in Judaism. And many other places, but no, Ben Shapiro that never even finished anything in his life according to the Torah, he just decides that no, that we don't believe in uh, eternal gain. No, we don't believe in it. It's just, uh, it's just a cleanup process because you have some schmutz, uh, but then everything's okay. In so many words, Obotai, he created a new religion. And he made Donald Trump or whoever right, you know, right-minded uh, person as the Mashiach. That's what he did. And that's a very, very dangerous person. Much more dangerous than a lot of people think. He may very well be a nice person. But apparently all the Netflix that he watches, all the movies that he talks about, apparently they made his mind a little stupid spiritually. A little stupid spiritually. And unfortunately, when you're a public person, it's too expensive for you to be stupid spiritually. Why? Because now your opinion is now other people's knowledge. Your opinion is other people's knowledge. Therefore, when your opinion is against the Torah, their knowledge is against the Torah. Therefore, they are going to go to Genom because of you. So the only hope we have in order to reach some of those people is hopefully they watch this or they hear from somebody from somebody else. It's really the only hope. At least we made our effort. But that's it, Rabotai. Not interested in debating him or anybody else. I have no, 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 nothing in this. It's just that there's so much damage being caused by ourselves, by our own, our own people. Our own people. And no one's really doing enough about it. So hopefully we could do something, maybe to encourage others to do more. But either way, the Torah itself tells us that we have an obligation. We have an obligation to say something. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shuim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app 
uh, while you're using other applications on your phone, you'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat L'chav.